It's interesting, Peter showed me uh, uh, some kid who was on, uh, I guess he has his YouTube channel or something. He made a video, he makes a series of short films, and the one I saw was, he was dressed up as a woman, and he was doing what is really a very old-fashioned, he was doing an update of a very old-fashioned burlesque sketch where, you know, guys dressed up as women and did, like, little shtick. And he got some kind of reality TV show deal or something. And I told my students that he had, like, 800,000 hits. No, 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 he had, like, 7 million hits. Okay. And they said, that's not that big a number. It, compared to what some people get, there's a blogger who got a TV series. Uh, but but well, there's, I, there's a new phrase yeah. now that they're using called vlogging. Maybe you're familiar with. Yeah, it. but what I find really fascinating about this is that people, young people, and I mean like 20 year olds, look at this and think it's new, when in fact. Because I think one of my missions as a teacher is to give them a frame of reference. Then they'll make better product. You know, if you know what's come before, you're you're going to build on it rather than think you've created. And and so I we watch this thing as a sort of an object lesson. And I said, this goes back to vaudeville, to the British music halls, to to burlesque. This is not new. This is a new take on that. I don't know whether this kid actually. My bet is he had not. He just thinks he's really funny, and it's kind of, it you know. But it's really stupid, and I mean it's really stupid. I've seen some good bloggers and you know good sketches. Um, Margaret Cho took a guy on the road that she and I saw I saw him open for her. A guy who did this thing. Um, he dressed up as a girl. This is like four or five years ago. He had a viral a video that went viral. It was like, let me wear that sweater. And and she took him on the road to help his career. And yeah, I don't know where he is now, but he had this song. Everybody in the audience, I mean, my wife and I were the oldest people in the audience, and everybody was singing the lyrics to this song, and they, all on YouTube. So the world has changed. But I would just like people to know the references they're making, whether they realize it or not so that they can do something really original. Because I assure you that, and this isn't comedy guys, but Sorkin and, and Alan Ball and you know Elaine May and all these people, they know their history. Sherwood Schwartz knew his history. Leonard Stern knew his history. And, and I think Woody Allen, you can be sure Woody Allen knows oh, yeah. the history. Albert Brooks. Um, but also we see constantly we're watching sitcoms, these comedy writers have an incredible backlog of, you know, if you ask a musician, um, you know, every, every jazz musician can tell you the chords to all the standards. And all the classical musicians can play, depending on the kind of music they play, whether it's Bach or Mozart or... And these writers know all the old jokes. Mm. And they have an That's incredible so backlog. True. They they know everything, and we, Jeffrey and I always marvel at how they take classical jokes and then update them. Tell tell them the, the Jack Benny story. Oh, well, that is a great story. Um, the famous radio joke, the Jack Benny radio joke from the '40s, is he's in an alley, he's being mugged, and it's the longest silence in radio history to this day. Nobody topped it, and the and the 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 robber says, um, "Your money or your life." And there's this long, long pause, and the and the guy says again, "I said your money or your life." And another, even longer pause, and Jack Benny says, "I'm thinking, I'm thinking." Well, Roseanne was doing a show. Why don't you tell that part of the story? Um, we interviewed Bob Meyer, who's the, the showrunner for Roseanne, and. They used that joke. What they did was they had Roseanne pregnant with her third child on the show, and she was taking a Lamaze class. And they said, do I really want to go through natural childbirth a third time? It was so painful. So she tells her, uh, her doctor, um, I'm, maybe let's try some painkillers this time. 
So he says to her, you know, with your weight, you could endanger your health or the child, if the child's health. What would you like to do? <laughs> I said, well, I'm thinking. And again, very funny joke, but if you knew your history, you knew where it came from. Uh, later, I saw the same joke in Big Bang Theory. So again, it's, it's nice to know that all this material is out there waiting to be updated, waiting to be... I mean, the, the, the vlogger that, uh, that Jeffrey was talking about was basically doing Milton Berle, right. who was doing burlesque. Right. Who, which is and, what he came out of, Milton Berle, so... Yeah. So again, it's, it's knowing your history. It's um, uh, One of the things that makes uh, Jeffrey really angry is when kids are presenting screenplays and they have no understanding of the history of the genre that they're doing. Well, it's that they'll come in with an idea that they think is totally and completely original and then someone else in the class, it always pleases me when someone else in the class rather than me having to be the bad guy says, oh, you know, that's like that movie in the 1950s, blah, 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 blah. You know, not that you couldn't do a new spin on it, but you should know it. Sure. You know, it's, it's kind of, I, uh, to me, it's akin to being a primitive artist. A primitive, yes, it's beautiful, but the skills are limited. Whereas, you know, if you've studied art history, even a little bit, you have a sense of, what you know? What are different kinds of brush strokes? Why why do artists paint in different schools different ways? And I think, how can you be hurt by having knowledge? That's, well, I mean, in yeah. any field, there's a famous story that uh, George Martin, the producer for the Beatles, was doing a session with them, and they were doing "She Loves You," and at the end, they said George invented a new chord, and George Martin laughed and said, "Yes, an A sixth." It was the sixth chord. It was like a standard chord that yeah. every, every good jazz musician knows and yeah. every good classical musician knows. And he figured it out and he invented a new chord that the whole world who was educated knew. You know that Paul's dad was in the British music halls. So Paul was second generation and uh, so probably grew up with some of that. Just like... Um, Billy Crystal's parents were in the business. Jerry Lewis's parents were in the business. Albert Brooks's dad was a guy named, well, his, I don't know, his real name was Einstein, because that is Albert Brooks's real name, would be Albert Einstein. But his, his showbiz name was Park Your Carcass. So, and his brother is the guy, have you ever seen Curb, Curb Your Enthusiasm? Oh, Karen, we have to work on you. <laughs> We have to get her to watch some good TV. That's a great show, by the way. I hear it is. I know. Well, his brother is a regular on it. There's a guy named but, Bob Einstein. But he also he also had another bit that he did, Bob Einstein. Oh, he Dave, played a kind of... Dave the Daredevil. Yeah, he was sort of doing that real. He was doing a spin a takeoff on the real guy that like Evil jumped Knievel. canyons. And... Yeah, I remember. Evil. He had a show a very early in Showtime's history. He had a Showtime series. Super Dave Osmond. Though. Super Dave Osmond. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, your turn.